beginning to notice our breath, to be with the breath, feeling through the breath our existence everywhere. From the feet to the ankles, the knees, up the thighs, the hips, meeting the base of the spine and traveling up the length of the spine. The face, the jaw and out through the crown of the head. And then bringing the hands together and pressing the palms together. The outer arms moving back. The sternum plate moving forward. And the face innocent and quiet. Opening our practice together with one more. Inhale. Oh. And releasing the hands. The eyelids opening, but our attention staying inwards with the breath. And let's begin. So taking a strap and keeping our bolster, starting with a lovely round of Sukta Parangushasans, Number one, lateral and paripita. Making a little loop. Moving the bolster to the right hand side. And lying down in the sutta tadasa. Press the heels down firmly, activate the legs. And now bend to the right knee. Place the loop on the arch of the foot. Straighten and slide the arms down. Our first opening of the morning, of the afternoon, of the evening, whenever you're doing this. So begin to feel your length stretching beyond the boundaries of the skin. Breathing into those new spaces. Relish in that opening, reach for it. And now moving the hands back up the strap, making sure that the bolster is right in by the side of the hip. Right hand holds the loop. If you can't hold the loop without bending the knee, make the loop bigger. Straighten the legs, left heel to the ground, and with an exhale, lateral sutta parangushasa. Keep rolling that left thigh in so that the kneecap does not roll out to the left. And then find the outside edges of your feet and pull the outside edges of the feet down the outer legs of the outer legs towards the outer hips and bolt the outer hips together towards each other. Holding all of that, broaden the pubic bone to the left and to the right, broadening at the base of the abdominal cavity. And then bringing the leg back up and releasing, moving the bolster to the other side. Sutta Parabhushasana one and lateral Sutta Parabhushasana. Left leg is lifting from Sutta Tarasana. Sliding the hands down, finding Sutta Parangushasana 1. And re-lengthening in all directions. Going past the boundary of the skin, extending. Feeling the joints become firm. Feeling intelligence extend in every direction. Front, back, top, bottom. Sides. And now bringing the hands back up, holding the loop, making sure that that bolster is tucked right into the outer hip, and with an exhale, finding lateral sutta parangushasa. Press the right heel to the floor. Make sure that that right leg isn't externalizing in any way. Roll the right thigh in, densify. Wrap the muscles around the bones. Be firm. 
And then from the outside edges of the feet, travel up the outer legs until you reach the outer hips. Bolt the outer hips in towards each other. And broaden the pubic bone. Keep gripping the legs, broadening the pubic bone, which is bringing broadness to the abdominal cavity, which is bringing broadness to the ribs. And then bringing the legs back up and feet to the floor. Bring this bolster right in. We're going to do Parivrita Suttavarushasana with the right leg. You have two blades to choose from on the bolster. So like that or like that. So if you know that you're tight, move it already onto this higher blade and hold it in. Right leg lifts, loop on the arch of the foot. Left hand is holding the strap. You can hold the bolster in with the right hand. Charge the legs. And with an exhale, bring that right leg across, allowing this hip to lift up. Bring it right across so it's resting on the bolster. Extend the right arm to the right and turn and twist to the right. Parivrita Supra Parangushasa. Let the abdomen be soft. And with the exhale, let it move from the left to the right like a river of exhalations that keep moving the organs, moving the abdomen, helping us to turn and twist from the center point, from the navel. Keep extending out through the feet. Shoulders back, chest lifting. And then bringing the leg back up and releasing to change sides. Bolster across, choosing the blade. Sutta Left leg lifting and the loop on the arch of the foot, close to the heel. The right hand has to hold the loop, so the left hand can hold the bolster if it's kind of wobbly. Straighten the legs, and with an exhale, finding Parivrita Supra Parangusasa. Left arm extended. Yielding in the abdominal area. Softening there. Then in the exhale, do its work. Waves of exhalations. Over and over again, turning from the right to the left. The belly button as the center point of that turningness. And then bringing the leg back up. Okay, rolling over, moving the block to the side, I mean the bolster to the side. Taking the strap, doubling it up so you have double strap, hands holding the edges, yoga mudrasana, in vajrasana, deepening the roots of the thighs by pulling the straps back and down. Feel the sacrum broadening. The outer thighs going with the strap energy towards the earth and the trunk extending forwards. Strap to the side. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Spreading the palms and spreading the fingers widely. Turning the toes under. We're going to keep the knees bent, keep the heels lifted, 
and with an exhalation, lift the sit bones to the sky. Stretch out the roots of the toes, broaden the base of the foot, absorb the femur bones into the hip sockets and lift the sit bones higher and higher, stretching the arms. And now straightening the legs, keeping the heels lifted, femurs into the hip sockets, lifting the buttocks, stretching the arms, pushing yourselves away from the heels of the hands. And now walking the feet a little tiny bit forward and with an exhalation, pressing the heels down, but keeping that lightness in the buttocks, lifting up to the sky like balloons as the heels densify towards the mat. Keep stretching the arms. Push the shins back, push the front thighs back. And stepping your right leg forward, finding simplified Pashvottanasana. Of course, taking blocks if it's hard to straighten the leg and still have the fingertips on the floor. Turning the hips more and more towards the right, absorbing the femur bones. And now bending the front knee, and as we bend the front knee, push into the back heel firmly and absorb that front femur bone into the hip socket. And then extending that front leg and re-suck the front thigh muscle up, absorb the femur bone into the hip socket, walk the fingertips forward and lower the head down. Press the front heel down and forward. Press the back heel down and back. The weight of the pose moving back. The hips moving back but the trunk extending forward, like our yoga mudrasa. And then bringing the fingertips in and changing sides. So stepping the right leg back and the left leg forward, nice wide stance, taking supports as needed, turning the hips to the left, Press the heels down and away from each other and suck the roots of the thighs into the hip sockets. And now bending that front knee, keep pressing down into the inner heel firmly. Draw the left femur bone into the hip socket. Press that back heel away and down, keeping the back leg alert. And then extend and re-grip that front thigh muscle up firmly. Grip it, draw the head of the femur bone in. Walk the fingertips forward and exhaling the head down. Press the heels down and away from each other. Keep rolling the back thigh in to help the hips stay turned to the left. Shoulders broad, legs firm, femur bones into the hip sockets. And then stepping back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, heels lifted, knees bent. Find the shoulder blades and press the shoulder blades forward towards the breasts. Feel how that opens the armpit chest. And now also press the shoulder blades down the back. So they're going in two directions, forward and down the back. And feel how that lengthens the tricep, extends the arms, and moves the weight of the pose back. And now let's straighten the knees, absorbing the femur bone into the hip socket. And now let's press the heels down, keeping the lightness in the buttocks. Now reconnect with the shoulder blade action. And now walking forward, feet the width of the mat, 
the heels slightly turned out. Fingertips to the floor, coming to Malasana squats. Press down firmly into your heels. Femurs coming into the hip sockets and now begin to sit back on an imaginary chair. Keep the heels dense and even, pressing down, down, down. Now widen the knees apart a little bit and wiggle the shoulders in. Take hold of the upper arms and now re-squeeze the arms with the inner knees. Continue to sink down, absorbing the heads of the femur bones, pressing into the heels, coming down. Pull your hands on your elbows, pull them towards the mat. Drop the head down completely. Now re press into the heels, slowly coming up. Releasing the arms, fingertips to the floor. And as you straighten the legs, rip the femur bones up, drop the head down. Reach for the backs of the heels, Uttarasa. And then releasing hands to the hips, elbows back, bend the knees slightly, press into the heels, lifting up and stepping the feet together. Tadasa. Okay, ready for Utita Trikanasan, taking a block. If you have two blocks, one on each side of the mat, waiting for you. Starting from Tadasa. Jumping or stepping, widening the feet apart, going really big, really broad, extending past the barriers that we can find ourselves in, turning to the right, making sure the heel is lined up with the arch of the foot, turning this back foot in a little bit, gripping the legs, inhale, lift the chest, exhale, reach, absorb the femur bone in, press that front buttock bone forward, Open the chest to the sky and come down the block underneath the shoulder, the top arm to the sky. Regrip the legs. They love to just relax the moment you're in the pose and push into the outside edge of the foot. Relax the front throat. Don't hold tension there and gripping in the face. Now bring the arm diagonally downwards. And we're going to extend like a Pashnakonasana arm. Extending. And back down. And extending. And back down. Keep trying to extend the bottom waist. And extending. And back down. Lifting up. And changing sides. Turning to the left. Finding our position, gripping the legs. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, reaching as we slide that front femur bone in firmly. The block underneath the shoulder, the top arm lifting. Regrip the legs. Push into the outside edge of that back foot. Turning and twisting to the sky. Checking on the state of the throat, the face. And now let's lower this top arm and find our Parashvakanasana arm. Ready and up. Feel that lovely stretch in the waist. And back down. And back up. Regrip the legs and back down. Lengthen the bottom waist. And back up. And back down. Inhaling up, turning the feet in, and place the hands on the hips. Okay, let's move our blocks back out, ready for Parashvapanasa. Turning to the right, through Virabharasana 2. Exhale. Be wide enough that your knee is not going forward over the front foot. So really wide, 
And so the front thigh here is flat as much as possible. And exhaling, reaching, absorbing the femur bone in, finding the block, and stretching the top arm to the sky. Bringing the arm diagonally down, press this outer thigh against the arm, traction from there, and lifting up three times. And keep pressing the outer thigh against the arm, and down. Last time we're going to hold it. And two. And one. The arm back down. Through the Abhidrasana two. Back up. And turning to the other side. Lift the chest. Widen, flatten here, lift the chest. Exhaling, reaching, absorbing the skinner bone in. Stage one. Re push into the outside edge of the back foot, squeeze the back inner knee, and push the outer thigh against the arm, tractioning from there. And now diagonalize the arm and lift. And back down. Keep pushing the thigh against the arm and lift and back down and lift and back down through the other last one too. And up, turning the feet in, moving our blocks to the side. I'm just going to come back on my mat here so you can see me. Turning the toes and the heels out. Prasarita Parutanasana. Exhaling forward. You can always have the blocks here as needed. Inhale, looking up. Squeeze the knees, squeeze the thighs up, femurs into the hip sockets. And exhale. Look at your forearms and make sure that they're perpendicular to the mat. Lift the shoulders up, don't let them hang and shorten the neck. Scoop the outer elbows in towards each other. Now re-grip the legs upwards, upwards. Sucking the muscles upwards. Keeping the hands where they are. Inhale, look up. Regrip the legs, the heels pressing down, the inner groins rolling back. Hands to the hips, elbows back. Coming back up. Outer arms back. Chest lifting. And then releasing heels and toes and heels and toes in until you can step or jump the feet together. Coming to face the short edge of the mat. Turning the toes in, the heels out. Hands on the hips. Uttanasa. Holding onto the outer arms, hanging Uttanasa. Be fully present in both of the feet, pressing down in order to better grip and suck the muscles upwards. That down and up action. And now Malasana squats, densifying the inner heel as we begin to bend the knees. Feeling the action at the root of the femur bone as we squat back and down, widening the knees apart so that 
Our shoulders are included, our trunk is included. Coming down as low as we can, keep pressing into the heels to activate the back leg. Now draw the inner knees towards the shoulders a little bit. Pull with the fingertips on the elbows. Feel the back lengthening, broadening, the skin stretching. And begin to push through the feet to slowly, with control, with precision, come out of the squat, but keeping the femur bones integrated, not pushing them out with that action. And at that final moment where they straighten, grip and suck the front thighs up, the inner thighs up, the outer thighs in, sharpen the femur bone head, inner groins rolling back. And releasing fingertips to the floor, hands to the floor, stepping back to Arun heels lifted, knees bent, sit bones lifted, lift the heels even higher, absorb the femur bones in, stretch the arms, find those shoulder blades, pressing down and moving down the spine. And now the next inhale, straighten the legs and keep the femur bone heads in the hip sockets, the shoulder blade action clear, and now with the next exhale, lower the heels and lighten the buttocks up. And he's bending the knees and coming to be on that. Okay, coming for Ardha Sutta Virasan, a block and a bolster. Here we are, actually we've got a blanket too for the neck and head. So coming in, right leg first, moving the calf back and out, and sitting on the block. Moving this foot in and pushing the outer edge of the foot down. Coming into Sutta, which is lying down. We tilt the pelvis on the way down. The blanket under the neck and head. Now just put your right hand on your front right thigh and press down, lengthen. Iron that front thigh muscle to the thigh bone. And now bringing the arms up, bending the elbows, holding onto the outer arms, and bringing the arms above. Soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Inhaling through the third eye and exhaling through the belly button. Directionalizing the breath in that way, having a different entry and a different exit. And with each inhale through the third eye, the Ajna Chakra, visualize streaming golden light coming in, being drawn in, flooding the inner system, flooding everything with that radiance. And with each exhale, actively ridding ourselves of anything dark, negative, anxious, unwanted, unneeded. Bring the arms back up, back to the ground, and coming up, hands, and stretch the leg back, and just ease that knee out. And then let's change sides. So our Davidasana now on the left. Moving the calf back and out, sitting on the block, bringing the foot in and pushing the outside edge of the foot towards the mat. And we're coming down, making sure to tilt our pelvis so the buttocks are moving towards the front of the mat as we lay down. 
left hand on the front of that left thigh, pressing down, reminding the muscle to iron to the thigh bone. And then bringing the arms up, changing the rest of the arms, and finding our full Ardha Sutta Virasana. Long, soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Inhaling in through the third eye, that radiance, that light, and exhaling out through the navel, all that no longer serves us. The lowers our vibration. Imbuing each part of the breath with relevance, with direction, with purification. Keep using the hands to pull the elbows back. Keep pressing the front thigh down. And then bring the arms back up and to the ground. Making our way up. Coming forward and stretching the left leg out. And releasing. Okay, let's move our equipment and let's have one blanket and maybe a strap meeting back on the mat. The blanket folded and place on the left hand side of the mat, a little bit more on the left than the full mat, and coming and taking a seat, Pranjaru Shishasam, left leg extended, right knee bent, so we're utilizing the corner of the blanket, and we're widening our sit bones around the shape of that corner, broadening the base. The strap, we're making a bigger loop because we want to move backwards first in order to lift the chest. So we want to get rid of this idea of curling forward and rounding. First of all, being able to lift up and then we'll go through stages in the pose. So adjusting your strap as needed. And we're starting from here. This bent leg is rolling back even though we're turning to the left. Use the hands to pull the femur bone into the hip socket firmly and from that action lift the chest. So the Dandasan action Keep the inner groin of the back leg rolling back. I'd love to lift up. Keep lifting the chest, pulling with the hands, having firmness as well as lightness and liftingness. And now we're going to exhale forward. And our right hand is going to hold the strap as close as possible to the foot. And the left fingertips to the floor. We're twisting to the left. With each exhale, twisting. And keep that bent leg rolling back, anchoring back. It's inner groin rolling to its outer groin. As we turn and twist from the belly button to the left, over and over again with each exhale. And now we're going to come and face forward and reach with our hands to the foot or still holding onto the strap, lengthening the trunk rolling that back leg back and finding full Janu Shishasan. With your hands, pull on the strap of the foot to really keep the integration of the femur bone. Anchor the back leg, rolling its inner groin back and pressing the outer thigh towards the earth turning and twisting from that action and feeling the right belly button move towards the left belly button as we increase our depth here. And 
arms and we're gently releasing. Moving the back out and changing sides. Right leg straight, left knee bent, Janu Shashasa. Widening our buttocks apart for that broadness. Our strap in position, pulling back, lifting the chest. Femur bone into the hip socket, lift the chest even more. Then that's an action, but check that the inner groin of the bent leg is rolling back. So there's a slight twisting already. And now we're coming into an increased twisting. So the left hand is going to hold the straps as close as possible. Right fingertips to the floor, pressing, turning, twisting. Lengthening forward as we twist to the right. And being present with the breath everywhere, observing how quickly that bent leg likes to lift up, rolling it back. And from that action, twisting even more, finding the belly button as the center of the twistiness. Roll the left belly button to the right. And now coming to the fuller version of the pose, reaching forward, keeping the twist in the abdomen that we've placed there, and exhaling, lowering the head. With your hands pull so that the integration of the femur bone into the hip socket is alive, is clear. Roll the bent leg back. Press the outside edge of that leg towards the earth. And from that turn and twist, the left belly button moving towards the right belly button, turning, twisting, and lengthening forward. Moving our blanket back in. Pashimokarasa. Widening the sit bones apart. Oops, I went a little bit too far there. There we go. Taking our loop, placing it. Dandasan action. The outer edges of the feet traveling down the outside edges of the thighs to the outer hips, bolting there. Femurs in, lift the chest. Press the front thighs down, relift the chest. And now exhaling forward, the trunk coming forward, the buttocks moving back. Reaching for the outside edges of the feet. Pulling the outside edges of the feet back towards us. And exhaling forward. Pull with the hands, traveling up the length of the legs to where they come in to the pelvic area. Move the shoulders away from the ears, moving down the back. If the elbows are bending, lift them up. Okay, let's now take our bolster and come for a round of Jatara Parivatrasanas on the bolsters. Meeting back here on the mat. Jatara Parivatrasana with our outer bottom hip on the bolster and using 
the long edge of the mat for our arms. So moving the bolster, so you're going to be your left hand side when you lie down. And your hands are utilizing this edge, pressing down, activating. Then strap on the legs. Keeping us as even as possible. Now reaching with your left hand, hugging this bolster right in and lifting the left hip up and putting the bolster a little bit already underneath it so that when we bring our knees to the left, it's easier to get right on top of the, bus, the bolster. Not all about the bolster. <laughs> okay, we're using our hands and our arms to help us lift up. Ready? Inhale. Exhale. Press into the right elbow, the right hand to bring those legs over. And now when you're on the bolster with your hands, hold the mat again and push the hands down and away from each other. Stretch and turn and twist to the right. Keeping the back of the neck long, turn the head also to the right. Press the back ribs in and up. So that the ribs are broadening, those front ribs are lifting and broadening in the twistingness. The vena band still coming into the hip sockets, not losing that essential connection that helps us to get that inner lift and that brightness of the front chest the front spine as we turn and twist. And we're going to unroll now. So gently coming down and moving our bolster. Okay, bolster now to the right hand side. We'll be bringing our knees to the right and twisting to the left. So with your right hand, hug it in, lift the right hip and already put the bolster underneath the back of the right hip so that as we roll over, it's that much easier. Okay, preparing, feet off the ground, inhale. Use the hands, the arms to exhale and roll over the bolster. The knees coming towards the right elbow and then the hands holding the mat and pressing down and away from each other as we turn and twist to the left. The inner feet lined up as much as possible. The abdominal area yielding and softening. The head gently turning. The femur bone still being integrated into the hip sockets so that the back ribs can really press in and up and the front ribs can lift and broaden as we twist. Preparing to come out now. So unrolling and back down and feet to the floor. All right, taking the strap off our legs and let's come up and let's come to the wall for Vipanita Karani with a bolster, with a block, with a blanket, and maybe a strap. That depends on you. So meeting back at a wall for our final pose. The block is going to be sandwiched between the bolster and the wall, right in there. The blanket can have two usages. If you're very open in the middle and upper back and it's easy to get this front chest opening and you have no fragility in the lower back, you would double up the blanket 
and place it here for more lift. If the opposite is true for you and you're kind of tight in that area and you have fragility in the lower back, you would take this blanket and make a little threefold having it here. So decide what's right for you. And then this strap is for those of you who when your legs are lifted, you feel that it's hard to hold the legs up. So you would make a little loop and you would have it around the outside edges of the feet when your legs are lifted. So that you don't have to think about holding the legs up so that you can relax more profoundly. And if you are menstruating, you are obviously not inverting. You could do a Sukta Varakonasan bolster blanket strap. Varakonasan lying back on the bolster. All right, taking everything that's right for you. And let's come in. Sideways, coming in as close as possible to the wall. So that when we lift up, we're not falling back over the bolster. Getting in closer if need be. Don't worry if you're not feeling the block. It's not there for you to necessarily feel. It's there for your body to know that it's there. So that as you relax, that area will feel the support level and will permit itself to deepen in the relaxation process, which brings the femur bones into the hip sockets in softness. So the arms either diagonally extended away from you, rolling those front shoulders back, or you can have the elbows in line with the shoulders and the forearms parallel to each other. Now roll the thighs open, the inner groins rolling to the outer groins. Lengthen the back of the neck, soften the face, soften the front throat, and then closing the eyelids and being here. The breath smooth and soft and even. An expansive state of restingness. And continuing with the purification that we were doing in our Sutta Ardha Virasans. Breathing in the light of divinity through the third eye. And exhaling all that that impedes that light out through the belly button back to the universe.
going to bend our knees and slide our feet down the wall, bringing the legs to Vadakonasana. You can always use the hands to support the outer thighs if needed, if it feels too intense. The pubic bone melting and broadening. The belly also melting downwards, pooling towards the lower back. And the ribs lifting up from that poolingness, lifting up and broadening. And the more they lift, the more the abdomen pulls down. The more the groins relax, the pubic bone broadens. And then knees coming towards each other feet against the wall so that we can push ourselves backwards, sliding back off the bolsters. And now crossing the ankles on the bolster. If you had a blanket in front of the bolster, you might want to move it so that the lower back can completely be on the earth, rounding. And then changing the cross of the ankles. Resettling. And pressing the palms together in front of the chest. And giving thanks to the radiance to the light. And when we feel ready, rolling over to the right hand side. Making our way back up. And welcome back. Our practice is complete. Take good care. Namaste.